It's another big game at the top of the Bostic Premier Division, but you'd expect nothing less on match day 39. It's been a difficult week for the Hamlet with turmoil off the pitch jeopardising their home at Champion Hill and their 125 year history. On Tuesday night they travelled to league leaders and out of form Billericay side to battle it out for first place. So the title race is back on with Dulwich now leading the way. Can they keep the momentum going and end the season on a high? Last time we saw them, they were the comeback kings, overturning a three-goal deficit to draw three all with Hendon with an equaliser at the death. Won't be an easy job today, though. This may be Brighton's first season in the division, but they've settled in well and produced some fantastic moments, including a stunning free kick from Jake Turner against Folkestone. Can they cause an upset today? And after that win on Tuesday night against Billericay Town, Dulwich will still believe that they can pip their rivals to automatic promotion this season. They come up against the Brighton Sea Regent side that have done so well in their first season in the Bostic Premier Division. Billy Hunt with 19 goals for them so far this campaign. As for Dulwich, Reese Alassani has 14 to his name. It's going to be a difficult game for Dulwich they say they're no easy games in the division and certainly when you get to this stage of the season everybody vying for points and Gavin Rose knows that his team still have a chance of avoiding those playoffs Brightling see on the attack straight away in front of a really good crowd 
here this afternoon. You'd expect nothing less with the Hamlet involved, but it's Brightling C have got the first opportunity in the game. Can they cause this Dulwich defence problems? They might do now, and the header's gone over, and you have to say that Terry Amass got himself into a really good position, just couldn't guide that header down. Long, high ball over for Green to chase. Nathan Green likes to get forward, takes the ball down, ball stays in, goes cross, and it's a poor clearance in the end. It's going to fall to Dulwich on the edge of the box. What can they do? The shot comes in, and Clunis, who's managed 12 so far in the league this season, and a shot from the edge of the box, never troubling Bradbrook in the Brighton Sea goal. Dulwich hit the ball across the halfway line and it's going to fall down now to Alassani. Just goes down. Referee's blown the whistle and Alassani just having a look at his side there. Doesn't seem to be particularly happy, does Reese Alassani. A little bit of a coming together and perhaps an off the ball that the referee maybe didn't get a good view of and it looks like Alassani is in a bit of trouble down there Brightland Sea corner in it comes plenty of bodies in the box keeper comes to collect doesn't get it bouncing around in the area and Dulwich do get it away and it is bad news for Reese Alassani he's going to have to make his way off and Gamirez will be his replacement. They wouldn't have wanted that so early on in the game. Regent coming forward once more. What can they do? In the ball comes to the box. It's cleared once more by the Dulwich defence. It's only as far as the halfway line and maybe a chance for Brightness to put this ball back into the box. And there's an opportunity now for a shot. First opportunity really of the game for Brightness Sea region. It fell to Aaron Condon. You'd have wanted it to fall to him edge of the box, a little look there to see if he was offside and really should have done so much better with that finish, Condon. Again, it's the home side with possession on that far side. Battling to win the ball and put pressure on this Dulwich defence, but it's Dulwich that come forward now. It's really sloppy, but they've got a second bite at that ball and now perhaps a chance for Dulwich to show their quality. It's come to Green. Green tries to take the ball onto his left foot. It was a good challenge in the end from Amas. Still in the Brightling Sea half. Ramirez with a touch, it goes up to Green again and Brightling Sea will clear this easily away and perhaps now a chance for them. It's broken down again, really sloppy from both sides at the moment and Beanie will pick this up for Dulwich. They'll spread the ball all the way to the far side. Chance for a little one too. It's going to be a shot in the end. And it was Clunis again who had that earlier effort. Nice build up, edge of the area. That's going to be something spectacular to score on the turn from there from Clunis. Brightling C forward and the ball is played in to the path of Billy Hunt. Billy Hunt does really well to check back then and keep the ball in. He crosses it and it's going to be cleared away. It's a really important header there in a dangerous area, back towards Billy Hunt. Billy Hunt turns the ball in, keeper doesn't deal with it, second time that Dulwich have had real problems. Corey Adai, for the second time this afternoon, has really struggled to clear that ball away. It was a very simple catch. Not sure if he just lost his footing in the area. Still Brightland see forward now, and again, all the pressure He's down that Dulwich right-hand side, but Dulwich can get the ball away now with Clunis. Clunis will lay it off, perhaps an opportunity for Dulwich again to stretch their legs. It will come all the way back in towards Clunis. It goes all the way across the goal, and Clunis just couldn't get a touch then to turn that one in. It went past the keeper. It was a really dangerous ball. Brighton C looking to play their way out. And to be a bit careful here, the keeper's... Almost for a moment, lost track of that ball. But Brightling C do play the ball out and do get it away. And now they've turned defence into attack really quickly. And it's up again into that 18-yard box. Ball comes across. It's going to be an opportunity now for McDonald. And he should have done better with that. The ball came across and McDonald had 
got past Taylor. Just couldn't remain on balance to trouble the keeper. Again, this ball bouncing around in the Dulwich half, but Dulwich do manage to get it away, and perhaps an opportunity now for them as Gamirez comes forward. What can he do? Gamirez with a shot. Gamirez all the way across. Brilliant finish by the substitute. And it goes into the bottom corner, and Dulwich do have the lead. Plenty of chances for both sides early on in this game. And it was the substitute, Gamirez, who picked up the ball, and a low driving shot has put the visitors ahead. Beanie initially flicked the ball on. Gamirez picked it up. He still had a lot to do. Edge of the box, right-footed, and drove the ball into the bottom corner. And it's Dulwich, fresh from that big victory on Tuesday night, who take the lead here. Superb finish. 1-0 to the visitors. The change forced upon them. And it's come good in this first half. Dalic again with the ball. Now looking like they've got the confidence to perhaps go on and get another goal. This is an opportunity again, and it just goes past the post this time. Akinyemi with a chance in the box. Another really good ball through that played Akinyemi in. The ball came from Ferguson into the 18-yard box, and he took it first time, and that was a whisker away from being 2-0 to Dulwich. Inches past that post. Corner to the home side. Want them to get themselves back into this game as quickly as possible. Well, they're not going to do it like that. It's a really sloppy ball. And Dulwich can bring the ball forward over the halfway line again. They've got plenty uh, forward. And now it falls to Clunis. He's already had a couple of shots so far. Clunis goes, third shot of the game. And again, it's well wide. Good work from Clunis to get himself in that position. Free kick carefully placed down by Turner. They have got plenty forward now, and it's going to be Condon who's going to take it. No, it's going to be Turner. Turner into the box. It's headed over the bar by a Dulwich defender. No chances being taken there. Again, Brighton Steak can spread the play, and it will fall to Gould. What can he do? Gould looks to take on Ming. He needs to check back on himself now, Gould, to get the ball in. It's towards Condon. Perhaps he can inject some energy into his side. He's going to take the throw quickly. Back to Gould. Gould, nice little turn from Gould. Gets past the defender. Now it's a dangerous position. It's headed all the way out. It's going to fall to Turner. Wonderful goal from Jake Turner. Superb finish. And it's the second time... We've seen that kind of quality from Jake Turner just before half-time on the volley. That is as good a goal as you're likely to see this season. It was cleared by the Dulwich defence, but it wasn't cleared far enough. And it fell to Turner on his right foot on the volley. And he fired it into the top corner. A contender for goal of the season. That's two now for Turner that will be up there right-footed. He couldn't have hit that any more sweetly. And Adai, no chance. Superb finish. And Brightland Sea are level in this game. Never tire of seeing that finish from Turner. We knew that he possessed that quality, and he's shown us once again. Sun has appeared in this second half, and Dulwich will certainly hope that the game can finish brightly for them as they chase automatic promotion. But it's Brightling C that come forward now, and the ball is at the feet of Hunt, and he just couldn't get that ball really where he wanted it. The visitors have a corner. It comes, and it's headed, and it really was a good opportunity. Just couldn't get any direction on that header. Weatherstone will be disappointed. Got himself into a good position. Just needed to put some direction on the ball. Brighton see again the patience to play out. And this time 
They've made a little bit of a mess of it because Dulwich have picked the ball up and now they can drive forward the visitors with Akin Yemi. He fires it all the way in and it's a superb finish by the Dulwich striker. And Akin Yemi has punished Brightling Sea region. It was a really poor ball out to this near side. And they put themselves in all sorts of trouble as Akin Yemi picked up the ball and made the most of it. They've been playing out all game Brightling Sea and they just didn't get that one right Gould with a touch that was poor and Akin Yemi drove forward on his left foot there were so many bodies around him but he just managed to guide it into the bottom corner and you have to say a really good finish by the Dulwich man there was not a lot of room there one place that that ball could go the keeper was obstructed with so many bodies and he found the post and the corner of the net and Dulwich are back in front in this game. Can they finish the game off, Dulwich? Ball on this near side and looking to cause more problems with Ming. Ming does really well onto his right foot. Ming all the way across, drives it across and it's cleared by James Love. It was an important touch. It's still with Dulwich though on the edge of the 18-yard box. What can they do? Clunis checks onto his right foot. Lovely skill from Clunis, just taking his time. He lifts that ball up again. It's headed away by Brightling C, but Dulwich keeping the pressure on and really important that Brighton see just calm themselves down keep themselves in this game played by Dulwich and picked up by the home side again it's lofted in and Dulwich do well to defend it plenty of bodies forward for Brighton see missed touch there from Clousy that's allowed Dulwich to come forward once more but Brighton see will pick it up again Turner with a sloppy ball there and that's let Dulwich in and now an opportunity for Akinyemi perhaps to add to his tally on his right foot, what can he do? Goes all the way across, chance here for Dulwich, Clunis, Clunis just too much, took too much time, really needed to hit that first time. And it gave Brightling see the opportunity just to get that ball away, still with Dulwich. Really good play down that far side, chance to get the cross in, left footed comes in too close to the keeper. Did all the hard work to get the cross in. Still the home sides come forward. In it goes to the box. It's headed away. Really good header up towards the halfway line. Dulwich can bring this ball away. And again, on the far side can come forward. Over the halfway line they go. Clunis is making the run. What can they do? With Clunis on the far side, right-footed into the box. Goes for the shot, low down, and keeper did have it covered, I'm sure, but another opportunity and another shot from Clunis. Had so many in the game today, just took his time on his right foot, close control, and steered it just wide. Ball comes towards the 18-yard box. Dulwich defending it well, another opportunity to get it in, this time Gould, and it's found its way into Condon and he just tries to guide the ball towards the goal. Time running out for Regent if they're going to get themselves back into this game and Dulwich still causing problems. Great skill on that far side from Green. Green keeps possession. I'm sure Dulwich will want to do to see out this game. Plenty of games in hand for Billericke but all you can do as a Dulwich Hamlet player is win the games and see what happens. They maybe have another opportunity now and it comes all the way across. It's going to be put in, but the linesman's flag is up and Akinyemi for a moment there thought that he'd added to his tally this afternoon. Good finish on his right foot. He wouldn't have known the flag had gone up. But just offside from Akinyemi. Relief for Brighton C. High up again towards this Brighton Sea front line. Real urgency now as it falls down to Billy Hunt and now they need his goals right now to get themselves back into this game. It goes all the way across and Jake Gould had got himself into the box there. It was a coming together and Jake Gould went down. He really looked quite soft and the referee not interested. Bradbrook comes to the halfway line to 
clear this ball high towards the Dulwich box. It's still with Brighton City. Only one goal in this game. What can they do? Chance to come forward now with Condon. Shoots! Wonderful goal from Aaron Condon. What a strike from the edge of the box. Low into the corner. And Corey Adai for the second time in this game. Absolutely no chance with that one. And you'll be hard pressed to pick which one of the Brighton Sea goals this afternoon was the better. Another superb finish. And it was Condon who just picked the ball up all of 30 yards out, left footed. And a wonderful strike into the bottom corner. That is as good as they come from Aaron Condon. Keeper, no chance, right in the corner. And on any other occasion, it would be the goal of the game. But we've had two incredible strikes from Brighton Sea players, and they are level two apiece here. After that win away at Billericay, Dutch will be really disappointed to come here and not get all three points. Need all the points that they can get to close the gap and they're not going to get all three points this afternoon because two wonderful finishes from those Brightland Sea players have levelled things up. They went behind twice but they pulled it back. Frustrating for Dulwich but they take a point here at Brightland Sea. You would say a point better than none on the road but ground lost again on a Billericay team who have games in hand. And as for Brightling C, they thoroughly deserved their points. It's finished here. Brightling C Regent 2, Dalich Hamlet 2. I thought uh, first half we were excellent. Second half, I think the goal, when it came and in, in the manner of how it come, put us on the back foot a bit. Uh, knocked us for about five or ten. But to be fair to the lads, we changed the shape three times today just to try and deal with what Dulwich are doing and just try to get back in the game and it's worked. So, you know, two great goals. I don't think you're going to see, especially the first goal, it's an unbelievable hit. Yeah, we never lost. That's the positive way to look at it. Um, I think they've had two shots on goal and scored two goals. Both shots very good. Um, so credit to them for that. But for us, we've had uh, plenty of opportunity. We should have um, put the game to bed a lot earlier. We haven't. And um, I think we would have been better f probably 15 points this season if we had done that in during the course of the season. So for me, it's quite frustrating. Um, I think players need to really um, <clears throat> analyse themselves. Uh, not only in the good performances and the bad performances, I think that's where you learn them all. Fair enough, and obviously losing your striker, Reese, in the first five minutes, that didn't help at all, really. I think it was a little bit of a gamble on our part. Um, we knew that he obviously had, had a bad injury on Tuesday night. Um, he felt good. <clears throat> uh, it was a gamble, and we always want to be uh, positive. We feel that at the end of the day with Reese, if he had got through and maybe not got that collision, he's, he's, he's worth a goal. So we took the risk. Um, but even the, the young boy who comes on, he, he, do, he does well, comes on and scores a goal. So we're, that was quite positive anyway. We've been on a bad run. We've lost five on the bounce, which is never easy. It's easy then for players to just sort of turn up with their heads down, especially when you're playing the league leaders. You know, Dulwich are obviously a good club, brilliant, brilliant side. So... The easy thing today for the boys would have been to just turn up and just roll over, basically. And I just said at the start of the game, it's massively important for us. I think our biggest strength as a club is our work ethic, our, our togetherness, you know, and the fact that we're a team. And you know, and we had to do that today to match Dulwich. We had to outwork them, you know, and, and just try and keep ourselves in the game, be disciplined. And I thought we did that. I thought, you know, I'm sure Dulwich will possibly say that maybe they wanted more or deserve more but I don't think they did actually I thought on the balance of the first half we deserve to be at least level even though the goal was an absolute worldie and I thought on the balance of the second half they they probably did have the better of it but you know we, we stuck in there and, and got a result so it isn't always that easy I know the points uh, you know should say that you should win but it isn't that cut and dry at this level um, but yeah if you look at it on, from that perspective yeah we do have a good a, a good opportunity to, to go and get another win going a, win, a winning streak um, and that's what we're going to aim to try and do but um, I suppose today is what we can look at and we didn't do our job today Congratulations Josh I made you my Bostic man the match today for a great captain's performance and leadership at the back there yep. Yeah thank you yeah um, well, I'll be missing our skipper at the moment. Um, so we patched up, patched off a pick at the back. We changed the formation to suit the players that we have available. Um, and I've, I've stepped in and I'm um, struggling myself um, previously before the game. I had to pass the fitness test, but but yeah, just pleased for the team. Hard, hard work and uh, great performance. 
Have you played at this level and how long have you been at Brighton C? Never played at this level, no. Um, come through the leagues with Brighton C. Um, I've been, it's my second spell, I think it's my fifth year back. And I'm five years when I was a youngster and come back and, and continue to grow the club. Could this be a turning point for the, the team? Bearing in mind it's uh, five losses on the bounce and your next game up is Burgess Hill. You've got to be going into that game confident. Yeah, no, we, uh, we're always confident. We always back ourselves, especially at home. Um, it's been a bit disappointing with um, the games we've been losing by your goal. We've been close. We've felt we've been let down by decisions and that. But we just we never say die. We keep going. We work hard. And uh, that's the best quality about this team. We work hard. And we've got goals, guys who scored great goals. Um, especially Turner. He's got us two now in front of the cameras. And that's what we have in our team. As always, we have plenty of other action across the Bostic Premier Division for you.
New leaders in the Bostic Premier Division as Folkestone and Victor climb to the top of the table with 70 points. And at the bottom, it's a still a close run thing to battle relegation. Burgess Hill Town have three games in hand on Tooting and Mitchum United who couldn't beat Dorking Wanderers today. AFC Hornchurch still with a comfortable lead at the top of the Bostic North, but plenty chasing for those playoff positions. Romford now five points adrift and they play two more games than Norwich United at the bottom. Still close in the Bostic South, Lewis leading the way and a cluster of teams chasing for those automatic places and it's Shoreham that are set adrift at the bottom of the Bostic South table. So points shared here this afternoon and next up for us is another visit to the Bostic Premier Division as we see Kingstonian take on Staines.